house, isn't it? Um, the doors, you know, this is the door. Yeah, play school. I'm a great fan of play school, yes. Oh, yeah, my son loves yeah. it. We have to race home from school. I still watch it. There's nothing else on television. It's very interesting to the kiddies. I mean, I would encourage kids to watch it at any time. I just watch it when my little brothers watch it. The roundabout when they tell the story. Oh, they do sort of dressing up, don't they, sometimes? Big sort of round one with hair coming out the top. Yeah. Uh, hum Humphrey, or hum Humphrey or something like that. Jemima. Jemima. Um, little Ted. Yeah, big Ted. I think also it appeals to kids because it doesn't insult their intelligence. And they show you a film about things that are... Through the round window. You know, like milking cows and things like that, you know. And I've seen them making fish things. <laughs> it kind of has the madness that kids have. I mean, it's, it's, and obviously it's adults having fun being children as well. Look at that, the windows and the little house. A house with a door. One, two, three, four. Ready to play? What's the day? It's Saturday. It's Saturday, the 21st of April, 1979. 15 years to the day since the first play school went on the air. It's also 15 years exactly since the start of BBC Two. BBC Two should have opened with some crazy comedy from the Alberts and a big production of Kiss Me Kate, among other things, on the 20th of April, 1964. But there was a power failure on the big night, so the BBC's baby kangaroo didn't actually pop out of its mother's pouch until the next day with, appropriately, I suppose, play school, which at 11 o'clock in the morning was the first programme to appear on the new channel. Hello, I'm Virginia. Hello, I'm Gordon. Now we're inside, let's look around. First of all, look at all these boxes on the ground. This is our clock with a special chime. And this is our chair for story time. And this is the same chair, by courtesy of, by courtesy of cello tape. Um, <laughs> why was play school needed? After all, there were plenty of successful programs for the under fives. There was Watch with Mother and Picture Book, and a whole generation of children had grown up with Andy Pandy and the Flower Pot Men and Muffin the Mule and the rest. Well, the new channel obviously provided more airtime, and in 1964, even though five new universities were founded that year, there was a serious lack of nursery schools. The idea behind Play School was to provide the TV equivalent of a playgroup, with the emphasis on a different idea or activity each day. My first contact with Play School came about nine years ago, when my daughter, who wasn't quite two then, had just started watching television. Her favourite things on the box were rugby league football and play school. <laughs> I watched with her and became hooked. From 1968, the programme was repeated in the afternoons on BBC One, so that children who had, as it were, cut their educational teeth on play school could still get their daily fix when they came home from proper school. <laughs> but why is the programme so successful? Nancy Quayle, who was a nursery school teacher, has been advisor to play school since it started. I asked her about the title. For any young animal, including human beings, play is their first school. It's the means by which they learn. It's the means by which their whole development is protected. And you, you've seen a cat twitching its tail teach a kitten to pounce on it, you see. There, it's, 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 it's play school. And so that's how the title was chosen. So few people think that dressing up clothes are a part of creative play. They're creating their personality. All children love to pretend to be somebody else, and dressing up is a help. And that enlarges their sympathy and their understanding. It, it's, it's just an essential part of childhood, I think, make-believe.
A child has an inborn sense of wonder, and we do what we can to foster that in some of our poems, some of our films, making him realize that the world's a wonderful place, full of beauty and, and strange things. But one thing I learned early on about a film, the film must start with living creatures, preferably people, to hold the child's attention. Well, through the windows today, you can see some dustbin men collecting some rubbish. See where they put it. Have a look through the square window. That dustbin's got a number at the top to tell you which house it belongs to. Look at this. He puts the dustbin on a machine. Up. Empties. Switch down. Now it's empty. Look, there he goes. On his way back to the depot. Up the hill it comes. And we'll drive straight into the depot. That's been that hard It's been tipped up and emptied down into a chute. A chute? Then it goes on the ship. All the rubbish it goes down the chute. All the dust, the rubbish pick, and the people getting that rubbish. And there's a job. What are you doing? It's quite a dirty job. I'd like to work there. The rest is put down another chute into a furnace and burnt. Play school in action. Well, I believe you ladies teach at the school where that film was taken. Is that right? Yes. Would you would you like to tell me how you find the children's reaction? To, to the to the play school, madam. Um, oh, well, they love it. Me, they love it, yes. <laughs> they really love do. It. And uh, really do you find it, it, it helps with um, your play group activities? I mean... Yes. Well, yes, often we follow up the programmes. Yes. After. And mm. by doing the same things or developing them? Well, developing them, usually. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, we can talk about the implications of play school later, the pluses and the minuses, but I think it's time for a few bracing statistics. There's nothing like a good statistic to set the blood tingling now, is there? <laughs> well, there have been over 3,900 editions of Play School. In 1964, the programme won the BAFTA Award, and in 1968, an award at the International Television Festival at Monte Carlo. The audience has grown from two to five million, and 71% of all two to four-year-olds watch regularly. But it is the presenters, all highly professional actors, singers or comedians in which the strength of play school lies. Now, I'm moving here to talk to some of them. I hope I remember their names. It's a, just a, hello. <laughs> Carol, <laughs> that's Terry Frisbee. I know who he is. Now, Carol, you must have, uh, you must have tremendous memories of, the, uh, of those early days, particularly with the stories that you used to tell. Every day, a, a new story. Was yeah, I, think th I think they were different, because for one thing, a lot of the stories when we first started were pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. So that we had people like Nancy Quill and Eileen Colwell and Ted Moult, mm -hmm. <laughs> who uh, were actually played in, because we did the whole thing live, and you couldn't stop in those days, you see. You actually had to keep going, Good whatever heavens. happened. The later stories started, and uh, <coughs> then we did dressing up and dressed up stories, or we had picture book stories, or um, stories with props. Do you have any memories, Johnny, of, of, of storytelling? Oh, yeah. I have some wonderful memories. In fact, this has nothing to do with the story. It's to, to do with being a clown once, of which I'd never stopped being all my life. <laughs> and as soon as I got on the floor and to be a clown, I stopped being a clown. That was funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm laughing. Let's move down to Terry Frisbee. Now, you're better known perhaps these days as a playwright than, a, than as a, a, a play school presenter. But um, talk about those play ideas. How did you come upon them? How did you work them out? You, you had to pretend to be some things that absolutely strained one's own credibility. <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, uh, you, you know, sit there for five minutes and be a potato growing spots or something. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, do you have any memories of that? Well, I, I, 
I remember that there's the wonderful hand mimes that you have to do. Mm. People write wonderful rhymes. And then you have to find some way of hinging your hands backwards. I'm, I'm sure they're building presenters now somewhere with, with, <laughs> with joints that will actually move in completely opposite directions to where nature intended. Most right? of the, the finger rhymes and hand rhymes in those days were certainly new to me. I think probably yeah. they were known by playgroups, but they were new yeah. to the us totally. Was, was yes. sort of quite, uh, we had to learn tricky. them all. Mm. Mm. Well, have you got any memories of but those? now they're, they're well known, true and tried. Gordon, uh, were there any strange creatures that you had to impersonate in those very early days? Good grief. <laughs> the kangaroo? Give us a bit of the kangaroo. It's something like this. Hmm? <laughs> and they say, keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> Off camera. Your legs, and arms. Very good. One legged. <laughs> well, now I'd like to introduce the Clint Eastwood of the group. Um, he has been mentioned before, but meet him again, Brian Kant. <laughs> Brian. Yes, young man. Can I give that to you, yes. Terry? Yes. Now. Um, how did you how did you start in, in play school, Brian? I was acting in a schools programme and I heard that play school was starting on this new channel called BBC Two. I knew nothing about it but said, please may I come for an interview. So you had an audition, I think. Yes. Would you like to tell us what you did at your audition? I had to go to an office. An office. Which go. happens to be over there. Off you go. Thank you. <laughs> so I arrived in the office because the lady who said yes, do come along and talk to me was uh, thingy yeah you know, she's she was thingy she was in charge and uh, so we chatted a bit and she asked me if i was good with children and i said no and all those kind of things and eventually she she looked down underneath her table and she said get in that box <laughs> i said pardon she said she said get in that cardboard box and row out to sea <laughs> so, i thought well, it it's a fairly calm day, I know. <laughs> and I took some... <laughs> took some quells for... <laughs> it was a very similar box. I think I was a bit slimmer then. Anyway, so I got in the box, you see. And not only thingy, but there, was, uh, there, was, there were two thingies there. Two ladies watching me. So I was in this box and they're now towering over me. So I thought, well, uh, all right, let's go. Uh, so I got the oars and I rode out. <laughs> Well, it was a lovely day. It was I, and I, once I got out there, you know, it was beautiful. Nobody about. There were a few, few, few little clouds scudding. And seagulls. Cue Percy Edwards. Sea, <laughs> cue, cue seagulls. And, which I never mentioned at the time, but there was this mermaid I met. She was on a little rock. And I, anyway, and then eventually, I was out there for about half an hour, I think. Oh, I did some fishing. I caught a, I caught a Wellington boot full of custard. And they liked that. One of, one of the thingies, you know, I think she was head of thingy then, she, she laughed. So I thought, right, I'll go back in now, I've got to laugh. So I rode back in and I got out of the box. <laughs> that time I got out of the box. So I, so I got out of the box and stood there and she said, very good. Now, would you like to do a proper audition? <laughs> As though I hadn't already. But I got the job, and that's why I'm standing with one foot in a box talking to you on the 15th anniversary. Hello, <laughs> Ella. Do people recognise you in the street? Oh, all the time. Uh, even coming here today, I was coming out the tube station, this little girl ran up to me and said, she hugged my legs and said, I love you, I love you, I love you, I know you, I know you. <laughs> 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 Fred, do people recognise you? Oh, the funny thing is, it's the, it's the really little ones that are absolutely sure that it is you, but the mums never believe them. You know, the mum... <laughs> it's, it's quite true, it's quite true. You're standing at a bus queue somewhere in, in Eastleigh or somewhere out of the way, and the mum... And the little kids come, is the, is the, is the man of place school, mum? Is the man of place school? And the mother say, don't be silly. What would he be, what would he be doing in a bus queue? <laughs> 
Um, Carol, they, they say that it's uh, dangerous for an actress to work with children or animals, but I think that working with toys is even more difficult. Uh, how do you get on with them? I mean, why these specific toys, and, and what, what is this particular magic? Well, the toys are permanent. Every mm. week, yeah. the same five toys are there, whereas the presenters change, you see, yeah. every week. And each toy has a character of its own. Mm -hmm. And when I started to work on play school, I just treated them like ordinary props. You know? mm. But as I got to know them, I realised that they sometimes take over. Because, well, there's Humpty. I mean, we all know what yeah. Humpty does. <laughs> he's the extrovert. Oh, is and if he's not being taken notice of, he'll fall off a block or, I mean, he'll make himself notice, yes. always. Big Ted comments on performance. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a squeaker in his back, and when he falls over, he just doesn't fall asleep. He goes, <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, Humpty was the first of the toys to arrive on the scene. Here he is on his debut in the very first play school. Look who's here. You know who it is, don't you? Humpty Dumpty. And now I know why this box looks so funny. It's a wall. Humpty Dumpty's wall. Shall we sit him on it? There, he's quite comfortable. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. Couldn't put Humpty together again. Whistle while you work. Put on that grin and start right in to whistle loud and long. Just hum a merry tune. Just do your best, then have a rest and whistle while you work. You can jump about. You can dribble around. You can shout and yell and roar And when the ball comes your way, you can score Goal! It's time for a bath and the plugs in the hole It's time for a bath and the plugs in Now you can wash, now you can scrub Go rub a dub dub. Swill the soap suds right away. Then you'll be quite clean for another day. He's working very hard in the garden. He's working very hard in the garden. He's digging out the weeds to make room for lots of seeds. Well, he's got more weeds than seeds in his garden. Dear Play School, why do you always put Humpty last on everything? Because I do not think it is fair. So please can you make him first for once? Love, Venetiana Lamdell, age nine. Well, over the years, Play School has received thousands and thousands of letters from children, often helped by their mothers, of course, or fathers. Uh, and here's another one written in the child's hand. It's lovely. It says, Dear Play School, why does not Jemima win any of the games? <laughs> From Caroline, age five and a half and three weeks. <laughs> Here's another one, obviously written by Ma. Dear Carol, Hamble made a New Year's resolution to wash her face every day. Well, it is very dirty today, so please could you help her to get it clean, especially her nose. Lots of love, Peter, age four and three quarters. And there you go. Here's one I really like. It comes from West Molesey. Dear Play School, 
I watch your programme every day, and on play school today, the 17th of January, you made a rabbit jelly. <laughs> I assume it was a, a rabbit in the shape of a jelly, or a jelly in the shape of a rabbit. Anyway, at the end of the programme, says the letter, at the end of the programme, there was a horrid dead fly on the edge of the plate on the right-hand side. It was a big black fly, and it really made me feel sick. My mum said it was repulsive. From Julie Newbold, age 10. P.S. My brother felt sick too. But not only children write, a lot of parents write too, uh, asking if they can become presenters. Here's a typical example. Dear Sir or Madam, I would like to apply for audition for the program play school. Not having applied for anything like this before, I am ignorant as to the procedure I must go through. My experience with children is varied and wonderful, but my television experience is nil. If nothing else, I am an optimist. Well, like all good television, play school looks easy to do. Simple e even, but is it? Now, they only have one day to rehearse five 25-minute programmes. New stories, poems, songs, all have to be learnt. Yes, how's that end bit go? You go have a square. Each time you sing that phrase, it gets longer. There wood, a rattling wood, and the wood down in the valley, oh. But then I'm not sure how it goes on into, you know, now on the tree there was a branch. OK. Now on this tree there was a branch, a fair branch, a growing branch, the branch on the tree, and the tree was in the wood. Wood down in the valley, oh, it slipped too fast. Branch on the tree, a twig on the branch, a branch on the tree, a tree in the wood. Well, I don't know the tune. Not any quite there. Any resemblance to that in the original no. tune? Play the tune on your guitar. Can we okay, just let's... go through the whole little bit, the yeah. last verse? Would you play it very loudly? Now on that tree there was a bud, a fair bud, a growing bud. A bud on the twig, a twig on the branch, a branch on the tree, a tree was in the wood, wood down in the valley, oh. Fair wood, rattling wood, yeah, wood down in the valley, oh. Down in the valley, and I touch the towel for the clock. Okay. Sing my, I sing my old school song and went away. But what I'm not clear about is, do we just put on one piece, or we put on as many as we can when the music is I think we're supposed to put on as many as we can. Pardon? Start putting on the set of your footing. When he starts, you go on the Mine are all too large. Uh, would it, would it all be? sorts of clothes here, some large, some small, for putting on when the music stops. At television, there must be a script, but it's most important that presenters use their own words. No flowers. Oh, Big Ed has a Peter, with this newspaper thing, I mean, I, I've got to be making one as I describe how to make it, don't I? I have to show them how to make it. Yeah, well, you have to fold it and tear down. But, well, um, yeah, but listen, if I'm going Another thing I had to fight was their preoccupation with perfection. They would say, cut. I'd say, don't cut. I remember uh, someone dropped an egg and, and it broke. Cut. No, don't cut. Say, oh, that's a pity. But you see, eggs easily break. They have to be handled very carefully. Now it's the, the same when they're making things. The child will enjoy their mistakes and probably learn from yeah. them. Some string next. Um, quite a long bit. Needs to be doubled over. About that much, I think. Cut it off. Tie knot. Two ends. <laughs> I don't have to help with this. And oh, oh, that's 
silly one, isn't it? <laughs> it didn't knock until you put it through the circle. <laughs> What Ted's could you dance to? Something heavy? No, don't don't fall over. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> something heavy. Drum, drum dancing. Oh, Indian, red Indian dancing. Well, what have we got in here? Uh, 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 bird now. Can you guess which kind of bird it's going to be? Some glue. These are his eyes. I'll stick those on there. I've leaned it back so it'll stick. Well, I hope they stick. It's got a nose. Birds don't have a nose. A beak. Beak. Some glue on his beak. Sticks on there. <gasps> it's all coming off. Stick on. And his feet. One foot. Oh, he won't stick like that, he won't. You have to stand him up. Oh, if his eyes don't fall off, he's falling off. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck on. It's when I put his beak on, you see. The eyes fall off again. It's very easy, really. I only make it look like that. <laughs> And typical reaction there from our harshest critic, but for my money, the star of Pets Day, which, if you don't know already, is Wednesday, Katu, our cockatoo, who can be very docile, but on the other hand, <laughs> yes, that's one for each of the five presenters, at least, who've been savaged by this thing. He is just one of our resident pets. We have, uh, we have mice, and we have some fish, and we have a rabbit, and we have a guinea pig. Uh, and the lady in charge of all these, who looks after them for us, is a lady with a great background of knowledge, Wendy Duggan. Wendy, come and say hello. Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian. Are you just behave? Now, we're getting a, 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 a normal reaction from this bird now, aren't we? I mean, who, yes. who introduced him in, into this, into this programme? Brian, I'm afraid I was the fool that introduced him. Did you in really? the early days, I thought it would be nice to have something rather animated. And as I breathed them, I suggested that we try Katu what? to see what happened. And he was instant success with everybody. He's, he's certainly animated, yes. You breathe them, do you? So, I mean, let's have him out and see if anything exciting Are happens. Are you coming out? Is he typical, though, of, of cockatoo? No, we could change him for a quieter one. In fact, I have one that would be ideal, but he'd be just like a stuffed bird. You know, they get, some of them get very nervous in the studio when they see the cameras, and they don't do anything. But he couldn't care less. No. As you can see. But I could, yes. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> but he's a, actually, he's, he's uh, what are you doing? Trying to eat the props now? Trying to eat the bell, are you? I mean, one never knows see, what he's, he's going to do, Brown, next. I know. He could go <laughs> like that, couldn't he? Um, <laughs> one day, he flew away in the studio, when uh, Carol Wall was in the middle of a mime, landed on her head, and she carried on as if nothing had happened. <laughs> she suddenly that. sprung a hat, <laughs> a katoo hat. You're not going to run away now, are you? Uh, before he does, you, if you've seen the programme, there are times when we have music with the pets to look at the pets, and he will often join in with a song or just a bit of music and does a bit of dancing. But what you don't know is that just off camera, there's Wendy going... Uh, <laughs> and getting going, him to do it. Going like Let's that. Have a little... Can we have a bit of... Is, <laughs> is William at the piano? Oh, Bill Desard is at the piano. Give us a bit of music and see if we can get a, a get this animated bird going. He's looking. He's staring her out. Look. <laughs> Go on, Wendy. Up and down. Sit. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Come on. Nice. 
you can, in fact, do almost anything with him, can't you? Yes, we, he has been known to lose his temper with me at times, but at normally time. he's all right. I mean, yeah. I can do that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> apart, <laughs> now apart, from, apart from the resident pets, Wendy's often called upon, aren't she, to go and find strange creatures that uh, no one else would know where to find them, but she finds them, and to bring them into the studio for us. What uh, Can you think of anything in particular that you've... Had well, trouble getting, or has been funny We've had amusing. some large animals in the studio earlier on, but we'd rather like now to go out and film them outside if possible. We don't only go outside to see animals. We can see a child's first visit to school or a first visit to a dentist, things that would take the sting out of the, the, real, the child at home going for the first visit. But we do go through the windows to see animals, and today, through the windows, you can see some large animals through the arched window. Oh, down on the farm, riding on a bumpy tractor Down on the farm, driving out into the field Under the clear blue sky, time passes quickly by Hear the cockerel crowing in the morning on the farm Geese march in line, hissing, steeping, swaying Kittens have fun, jumping, dashing, playing. Pigs in the mud, snuffle and grunt. In the meadow, tails all curling, piglets running, squeaking, squirling. Down on the farm, feeding cocks and hens and chickens. Horses and foals racing, chasing in the field. Galloping round and round, hooves thudding on the ground. Hear the cockerel crowing in the morning on the farm. Ducks waddle by, chatting, quacking, preening. Goslings step out, looking, pecking, cheeping. Doze in the sun, go for a run. Cows and calves in soft green grass are standing, chewing, staring, mooing. Gentlemen, Mr. William Blazard. <laughs> well, Bill, if I may call you, but you are really speaking on behalf of, of many musicians and musical directors who yeah. uh, appear on the play school yes, scene. Many. And uh, this is quite a far cry from your usual thing, but apart from being a composer, you also uh, accompanied Joyce Grenfell. I, I know she's been a great friend of yours for years and a very special. A yeah. part of her act has been you. And you also work for uh, Max Wall. You accompany yeah. Max Wall and um, Marlena Dietrich. Yeah. Not at the same time, I assume. <laughs> <you know. laughs> and, uh, but it must be totally different, actually, to, to, to play for, for birds and, and, yes, and beasts and things. <coughs> it's and much more unpredictable. Unpredictable? Yes. Yeah. Don't know. But I have a saying that if you can see it, play it. How do you get on with things like, say, elephants? An elephant, yeah. Oh. Um, what about a camel? Can you do a camel? Ah, camel ah yes, music? yes, a far uh, Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern, yes. Fish, yes, yes. Th fish I find music? this instrument useful for fish. And what is that? This is a celeste. It's got little metal oh, bars instead of hammers, you know. But I usually use this one as well. And so on, you know. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, it's positively yes. Schubertian. <laughs> uh, music for elephants and camels. Why? Why? It is encouraging their imagination, and a great many adults would have been a good deal better if they'd had their imaginations encouraged when they were this age. Um, it, and movement, especially to music, is a good thing physically and mentally. I'm going to try and be a pig in a farmyard now. The pig has four legs. I've only got two, so I'm going to have to get down here like this. In the farmyard, and I go looking for food, like a pig does. 
And he goes in all the mud, and that's why he's got this funny face. And he goes... <laughs> and if you look closely, you'll see he's got this very funny face. It goes something like that. You try? Let's see if she wobbles. Are you ready? You wobble like an egg man. Backwards and forwards. Somebody gives you a big push back. Wobble! 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 Slowly come to a stop. two fingers. Now your turn. Pretend you've got a typewriter. Ready with your fingers. Loosen them up. And give it a good bashing. You ready? <laughs> Steady? Go! <laughs> Music's changed. Spiky music now. You do a spiky dance as well. You can be a skittle. Stand still and wait for the ball to come. And if it hits you, you can wobble. And if there's enough room, you can fall down if you like. But while you're trying to be a pig in the farmyard, in all the mud, looking for food, I'm going to have a little sleep. This evening we've seen and heard a lot about play school, but in the, the studio we have a specially invited audience of parents, teachers and experts. And who could be, after all, more expert than a parent uh, in the bringing up of small children? Now we'd like to know what you feel about the last 15 years of uh, play school, and possibly the next 15 years, what they should contain. In short, what has play school achieved and where has it failed? May I ask Ruth Craft? first. Uh, you wrote for Play School and still do, I know. What are your views on the program? Well, it's a very happy day, isn't it? It's been 15 years of continuous, good, honest entertainment, above all entertainment for children. I know it's fashionable to be solemn um, and be very sure about what we think children might need, but uh, the people who are sitting over there and the people who are sitting in the gallery 
act with a kind of confidence about children that they instinctively respond to. Well, there is another point, uh, of course, that does come up, is should programmes be made especially for young children? I'm sorry. Don't yes, surely one of the important I... points about programmes like Play School is the fact that they involve the children, invite the children to be active. And there's a very great difference between an entertainment programme which invites a passive response on the part of the viewer, and uh, this creates a sort of uh, perhaps a, a complacency. But certainly in Play School and in a number of other specially designed programmes for children, the involvement aspect is really quite important. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a teacher at a physically handicapped school, and I really feel that although Play School is very enjoyable for our children, um, it is geared, geared really to able bodied children. Uh, with the jumping about, the leaping about always. I mean, it's very difficult for our children. They can't do that sort of thing. And I think perhaps it would be nice if you could do some things that everybody could do. Yeah. Um, I, I don't agree with making programmes specially for handicapped children. I think one of the greatest attractions of play school is getting handicapped children and severely handicapped children, both mentally and physically, involved in normal things. Lady in the back row. Music, lots of the music, please, and lots more nursery rhymes. So many young children today, you know, don't know their nursery rhymes. It's unbelievable, but it's true. Could we have more of James Blades over there? Not only the music, but making the musical instruments and playing them, and as he informed us earlier on this evening, actually sneaking out and cutting a couple of pieces of wood to make the xylophone. Mm. Wonderful. Yes. Um, being one of the legion of mothers that help, um, I wonder, can I ask any of the presenters, have you ever considered doing um, a cookery, very simple, um, a cookery um, aspect? Then we get complaints about uh, children getting too close to <laughs> hot plates and things like that. There's a danger element. Or using for glass, that, using for that oh, knives. Well, one can do it, you know, in, in mime and sort of uh, in the fantasy content of a, an oven in a cardboard box made out of a cardboard box, which I think I've done in the past. Uh, but I think that's where the problem comes there. Now, there are other things. Where, the, where do we go in the future? Mary Waddington and child development, I believe, is your field. Can you suggest possible um, ways that we can develop in the future? Um, I think that they do their very best to be uh, imaginative, but I think we could develop it further along these lines because it's very easy to stay within the confines of a child's home, which, it, which is quite correct, but I think so often, long before they're five, they're, five, they're longing to go out into the big wide world. Don't you feel so? We had Johnny, Johnny Ball and myself did a, a week on the West Indies, didn't we? Which was really lovely, it was really enjoyable, and the amount of people who I met who said to me, I wish you'd do more programs like that because the children suddenly saw that living in the West Indies was almost the same as living in England. It's just the comparisons we made for the well, program, which was the just, the weather, just the weather, you know, the sunshine. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't like to see Play School go out into the world too much. Uh, I like the way just occasionally you go out of the studio and have the whole program outside the studio. But um, to go out too often, I think, would disrupt the unity of the program too much. If we're talking about minority groups, I think we should consider that we live in a multiracial society and that a lot of children watch play school who don't actually speak English. Get a tremendous amount out of it, but I'd, I'd like to see this sort of mirrored in play school a little more. In this year of the child, that uh, is a marvellous opportunity for play school to go out further and, um, as was mentioned before, look at uh, a wider variety of cultures, which we have in our country nowadays anyway and say that these are all acceptable and, you know, we can learn together and live together. I think on that we should leave it. <laughs> I'm going to finish um, uh, with a, a little letter that, uh, that they received from the Play School office recently. It says, Dear Play School, how do you think of all those wonderful new things to do every day? Love from Caroline. The people that, that run the Play School operation encourage criticism. They want criticism because they feel that how can the show progress, how can the series after series progress unless there is a positive contribution from the, from the viewers. So please, if you are watching and you want to say something, write. They will answer you and the post office will benefit. <laughs> but like it or lump it, next Monday morning at 11 o'clock, a new week of Play School will start. And with it, 
New title. A house with a door. Windows, one, two, three, four. Ready to play? What's the day? It's play school. 